Good day everyone. Today we will be discussing the module 2 for the fish to O2 aquatic ecology with the topic aquatic environment. So this topic or this module basically will discuss the different types of aquatic environment, the context of the water cycle and the different types of lotic and lentic ecosystems as well as the different species or zonations on those um, ecosystems. So primarily we are dealing or engaging on the deeper portion or a more deeper portion of the aquatic ecology study. And as the objective of the study at the end of this module, you are all expected to discuss the different classifications of aquatic environment and also you are expected to explain the water cycle. So as a form of pretest, no, um, I would like everybody to write at least one paragraph on what you have understand on the lotic and lentic aquatic environment. Okay, so you are going to turn that over via Google Classroom. Now, since we are dealing with aquatic ecology, let us first define or review what was ecology. So generally, ecology is the scientific study of how organisms interact with each other and their environment. This includes the relationship between individuals of the same species, between different species, between organisms and their physical and chemical environments. So all relationships of the organisms, may it be either to the other organisms or to the non-living organism, physical or chemical environments, is the scope of the ecology. Now, since we are dealing with aquatic ecology, basically we are more concerned about the water or the aquatic ecosystem. So aquatic ecology includes the study of these relationships of all aquatic environments, including oceans, estuaries, lakes, ponds, wetlands, rivers, streams, and many other bodies of water or bodies of water ecosystems. So tanan tanan nato ng mga um, discussions will involve in different ecosystems as long as it has water, right? So since we are dealing with water, we must first understand what is the context or fundamentals of the water cycle as what we have previously uh, learned or um, uh, our knowledge tells us that basic uh, cycle of the water is just evaporation, condensation, precipitation, runoff, and evaporation again. But in the context of aquatic ecology, there are lots of uh, different stages of the hydrologic or the water cycle, which we will tackle in a while in this module. So let us first describe or define what is water cycle. So water cycle is also termed as hydrologic cycle. It is a conceptual model that describes the storage and movement of water in the atmosphere, the lithosphere, and the hydrosphere. So basically, the movement of the water from the atmosphere or in the atmosphere, meaning to say in the air, lithosphere, meaning to say in the land, hydrosphere, meaning to say in the water bodies, right? So atmosphere is in the air, lithosphere are the land areas, the hydrosphere are the water bodies like lakes, oceans, seas, and rivers, right? Okay, so the water in this planet can be stored in one of the following reservoir. Reservoir meaning to say these are uh, storage, no? These are where waters are being stored. May it be either in the atmosphere, in the oceans, in the lakes, in the rivers, even soils, glaciers, snow fields, and groundwater. So, as to its process or as to its cycle, we have here the very comprehensive explanation on how the hydrological cycle takes place, right? So first off is through the evaporation, meaning to say uh, we all know what is evaporation, right? Evaporation is the phase change of liquid water into vapor. So the liquid turns into vapor and evaporates into the atmosphere. atmosphere. And then uh, the condensation follows, right? So the condensation is the cooling of the water vapor 
until it becomes liquid. So as you might have noticed, um, the vapor turns into clouds when it contacts with the other uh, water vapor in the atmosphere, right? And when the clouds turns heavy, when it forms it, uh, when it merges with the other clouds, it 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 turns heavy that that the air or that the air molecule cannot hold it so basically it will fall down and we call that as the precipitation mga ulan mga snow mga hail mga uh, sleets and any other types of precipitation there are different types of precipitation right so precipitation basically is the moisture that falls from the atmosphere as a rain snow sleet or hail depending on the regions so lahi lahi og mga form of precipitations on the regions of the globe. Sa mga tropical regions, more or less rain lang ato ang precipitation. But in the temperate regions, like mga, sa mga four season areas, nga na mga autumn, mga fall, or so ever na mga seasons, na ila ang mga snow and hills, no? na ilang lahi-lahi ng mga precipitations. Right? So we also have here the transport or advection it is the movement of the water through the atmosphere specifically from over the oceans to the land so i think um, you have wala pa ninyo yung dunggan sa nauna part sa water cycle so we call that as we call that as transport or advection wherein the movement of the water is from the above the air mo pa ingon siya diri sa land area so we call that as advection or transport another one is runoff runoff is basically the movement of the water usually from precipitation across the earth's surface towards the stream channels lakes oceans or depressions or lower points of the earth's surface so basically the runoff takes place in the land no land towards lake land towards the streams rivers and land towards the oceans so those are all the movement of the water on the earth's surface through channels. Let me it be either stream nga channel, lakes nga channels, and many other uh, form of channels, no? And then we also have here another one, the infiltration. It is the entry of the water into the soil surface. So in this figure, we can see the infiltration or the percolation. So here uh, we have the precipitation is entering the soil surface, no? What is the soil surface? We call that as infiltration or percolation. So percolation basically is the downward movement through the soil and the rock occurs beneath the root zone. So basically, ang um, pag-enter sa precipitation into the soil is infiltration. But once it uh, goes deep down to the beyond the root zone of many plants we call that as percolation so above is infiltration below is percolation i hope that's clear okay so another one is deposition deposition is basically the phase transition in which gas transforms into solid without passing through the liquid phase so dili na siya muagi og liquid phase ang gas diretso na siya pagka solidify right so like for example kanang pagka form sa mga snow pagka form sa mga hails so that is a vapor that basically transforms into solid without passing through the liquid phase that is deposition and another one is sublimation sublimation is the conversion between solid and the gaseous phases of water with no intermediate liquid stage. So sublimation is the opposite of deposition. Ang deposition is from vapor to solid. Ang sublimation is solid to vapor. Right? So that is basically the uh, process. Parts of the process in most regions of the world like the temperate regions. And another is the transpiration. The transpiration process by which plants return to the moisture air no kanang mga plants they they uh, provide um, water vapors to the atmosphere or kanang mga water vapors nga gikan sa plant mo na siyang gitawag nato na transpiration or transpired water vapors 
So, tanan mga water vapor is released from plants is a process of transpiration. Okay? Another is melting. When the solid ice gains heat, it changes the state of solid ice into the liquid water. Like for example, like in the polar regions, uh, there are huge um, amount of melting uh, the ice as a cause of the global warming as they call it. No? Mga global warming causes the melting of ice in the polar regions, which causes also to the sea level rise. No? Magtaas ang ato ang sea level because of the melting of ice as a result of global warming or climate change. And another is groundwater flow. When underground strata transmits accumulated groundwater to the outlets of rivers, springs, sea, which in turn as aquifers. So, tanan mga waters in deep or below the ground, no? we call them as aquifers. No? These are aquifers. In this figure, we can see here the aquifers. And these aquifers basically transmits uh, waters to the different um, reservoirs like sea. So, aquifers deposits waters into the sea. We call that as groundwater flow. Okay? So, basically, all in all, those are uh, the more comprehensive representation of the hydrological or the water cycle. And uh, part of your task at the end of this module is to explain your own terms using these definitions or using these words in your explanation in essay. Okay? We also have here the word evapotranspiration. This is the combined effect of evaporation and transpiration. So evap evapotranspiration basically occurs in these areas, no? Evaporation and transpiration. When you add that to uh, evaporation and transpiration, we call that as evapora uh, evapotranspiration ratio or percent. Okay? So, the planetary water supply dominated by oceans, approximately 97% is ocean in the planetary um, water supply. And the 3% is held as fresh water in glaciers and ice caps, groundwater, lakes, and rivers. So, basically, gamay uh, ayo ang fresh water, at least 3% lang, including the ice uh, glaciers, even kang mga glaciers nga daggo kayo, 3% lang na sila ice cups and many others so here we also have another representation of the water cycle so as we were mentioning a while ago the advection basically is the movement of the water from above the surface of the ocean towards the land mass of the adjacent land area okay so that is advection or transport and here we have the inventory of the water in the earth's surface so basically, this is the data on uh, the distribution of the water throughout the Earth. No, oceans basically covers for about um, 1,370 million cubic kilometers as a volume of water. No, ice caps 20, 29 million, groundwater, lakes, and many others. So basahon lang na sa mga distributions sa nila. And the approximate residence time of the water found in various reservoirs. Residence time bas basically is the period wherein this water is stored or stays. No, muna ng gitawag na to residence time because it stays in that particular reservoir. So this is these are basically reservoir, no? glaciers, seasonal snow cover, uh, soil moisture, groundwater in shallow areas, groundwater in deep areas, the lakes and the rivers. So, the average residence times are these. Glaciers, basically, the water will stay there for at least 40 years. No? Okay, frozen man sila. Mga seasonal cover, just 0.4 because mawala naman sila every season. And then, soil moisture, 0.2. Shorter kay, mag-evaporate naman na sila. Groundwater is 200. Ang groundwater in deep areas, 10,000 years kay dili kay na sila ma-access and more or less dili sila maka-flow no and uh, lakes 100 rivers is 0.04 nganong hinay kayo ang rivers because dili magstay og dugay because rivers are flowing aquatic environment flowing siya dili siya magstay sigurado siya 
duyung. And then uh, we have here the hierarchical structure of the aquatic environment. Previously, we have defined the hierarchical structure of the living ecosystem from the atom to cells to molecules down to or up to the biomes or the ecosphere. Okay, so we have distinguished that. So today, we have here the hierarchical structure of the biosphere down to rivers, lakes, and swamps, and seas and oceans. So this is basically a classification. So the biosphere is classified into lithosphere and hydrosphere. Lithosphere is basically the terrestrial environment, ang mga lupa na environment. Okay, so since we are dealing with um, aquatic ecology, we are more concerned about the hydrosphere. Aquatic ecology man ta, so ang atong focus is hydrosphere lang. Hydrosphere is basically the aquatic environment. Tanan areas nga nai water is the, the hydrosphere portion of the biosphere. So sa aquatic environment, we have there, we are studying about the hydrography. Hydrography meaning to say the study of these aquatic environments. So the hydrography of oceanography or the hydrography of the oceans and the hydrography of the rivers and streams. So oceans basically or the study of oceans is called as oceanography. The study of rivers and streams are called as limnology or rheology. So let's first take a look at the further classifications of oceanography. Now since aquatic environment is or all uh, aquatic ecosystem na classified siya into parat og tabang okay so parat na dagat og tabang na tubig ang iya ang classification let's first take a look at the parat na dagat oceanography the oceanography is the marine environment or the marine water environment natay mga marine water environment sa seas sa oceans so muna yung mga studies relating to the marine environment sa oceanography, sa, sa mga dagat, sa mga uh, what what are the seas that we are bordering in. Kung sa may mga seas na ito sa Pilipinas, uh, South China Sea, Celebes Sea, kung uh, sa pang mga seas sa ubos, mga Davao Sea, or Caspian Sea sa south. Okay? Sa may mga seas na ito. Oceans also have, uh, are under the oceanography. No? Naman tayong mga Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic Ocean, so daghan mga oceans. This is still covered in the marine water environment under the oceanography. Now, let's move to the freshwater hydrography or the study of rivers and streams and lakes. Okay, So, limnology or rheology ang under anak niya. Under the freshwater environment. Tanan freshwater environment is under the limnology or rheology. So we have here the three classifications of the freshwater environment, the lotic, the lentic, and the wetlands. So first, we have the lotic. Lotic meaning to say, these are moving environment or moving freshwater environment. Ang iyang water is nagamove like rivers, streams. So munang gitawag nato na lotic kay moving. Ang lentic is non-moving or standing environments. Standing water environments. So like lakes, ponds, on sa pamay mga dili nagamove, mga bugs. So kana sila nga mga environments are basically lentic freshwater environment under the limnology. We also have here the wetlands. So wetlands like swamps, marshes, muna sila ang mga wetlands. Kanang naa sa mga, uh, kanang na mga, sapa, uh, na mga, sa nga lang Mga tunaan, muna yung mga wetlands and swamps. Okay? So, freshwater environments na siya tanan. Now, let's move on to the freshwater habitats. Okay? What are these freshwater habitats? We will be discussing, no? Diri na ta siya sa, sa aning discussions. So, freshwater habitats basically occupied a relatively small portion of the surface of the earth compared to the marine and terrestrial habitats but their importance to the humans is greater than their relative area. Importante pa ni siya kumpara sa relative area sa uh, marine o sa terrestrial environment. Nga naman, nga nang importante man siya. 
here are the reasons why freshwater habitats are very important. Okay, first is that freshwater habitats are most convenient and the cheapest source of water for domestic and industrial needs. No, puha na to. So most of the uh, industry or uh, domestic use of water comes from the freshwater ecosystems. So tanan gina siya freshwater ecosystem. May it be either sa ciudad, sa rural areas, sa urban areas, tanan gina siya nagagamit og freshwater supply. So the most convenient and the cheapest source of water. Cheapest source because naara siya sa duol. Ang mga ang uban is mag -ang, walay mga fresh water, mag-angkat pa sila og mga ice caps. Tapos ilang i-melt, muto ilang source sa fresh water. That is very expensive and laborious uh, source of water. Okay? Another reason is that fresh water components are the bottleneck in the hydrological cycle. Bottleneck meaning to say, this is where the, the meeting place, the melting points. No? The bottleneck meaning to say, this is where the organisms are very diverse. Diverse kayo mga organisms dali sa freshwater ecosystems. Another is that ecosystems along with the estuaries provide more convenient and economical tertiary waste disposal system. In fact, this is the largest, uh, largest cities in the world are located near rivers, lakes, or estuaries that serve as a free sewage treatment. Meaning to say, uh, kung naay mga river, more or less, paspas ang development. In fact, kasagaran mga syudad na mga dagkong rivers, Butuan, has very large or huge river. Uh, kagayan, na ay mandu, uh, river po nga dako kayo diha. And uh, iligan, na po dako kayo nga river diha sa Mandulog uh, Bridge. no? Uh, meaning to say, most of the development are basically focused near the river banks or river portions of the biosphere. Okay? So, I hope that's clear. And let's proceed to the three, three classifications of the freshwater habitat. No, we have previously mentioned a while ago the three classifications are these lotic, lentic, and wetlands. What are the definitions of those? So, lentic ecosystems are basically standing water. Standing meaning to say calm from the word lenis, meaning to say calm. These are lentic ecosystems like lakes and ponds. Okay. Another is the lotic ecosystems which are the running water running water means to say the moving no like springs rivers streams so kana sila nga mga uh, environment another is wetlands no wetlands where water levels fluctuate up and down often uh, seasonally as well as annually so ang uh, wetlands basically naga fluctuate ang water levels so wetlands basically pwede siya uh, nasa, nasa terrestrial environment ang kasagaran sa mga wetlands are not fresh water but instead brackish water or marine water environment sa mga mangrove swamps are still wetlands but not fresh water okay? like marshes, swamps okay? so the, these are the three classifications of uh, freshwater habitats now here we have uh, let's first take a look at the lentic ecosystem so here we have the distinct zonation and stratification uh, are characteristic features of lakes and large ponds, no? So, may kalahian sa pond and sa lake. So, basically, uh, for my own definition, ang kalahian is that only the size. For me, the pond is smaller and lakes are larger. So, this photo is taken from the Google. This is basically the lake mainit. And this is uh, from the Google as well, this is a pond, no? Gamay siya nga, body of water. This is a very wide or huge body of water. In fact, um, most of the lakes are misconcepted as um, seas, no? There was a story, uh, a parent of an M MSU one, that um, uh, they told their son about the, how, they could trans, um, how they could reach the MSU. Uh, we all know for a fact that MSU is bordering the Lake Lanao. Lake Lanao is the largest or second largest lake in the Philippines. And it is the first deepest lake of the Philippines. 
Okay? So, ang late lang na umurug yung siya dagat kung tanawin mo. Okay? Yung na ang ginikana, naging ang ginikana sa bata na nak nga nang wala man ka nag, wala man ka nag, uh, ingon nga na day dagat diri mag bark or tana mi. But in fact, that is not a sea. It is a lake. A very wide lake, no? Mura siya dagat tanawin mo. Okay? So, anyways, uh, since we're discussing with the Atlantic ecosystem, let us uh, also understand what are the zonation and stratification of the Atlantic ecosystem. When we say stratification, meaning to say, muna ay uh, bot pasabot nga, layering. Stratification means layering. Okay? And uh, zonation of the Atlantic ecosystem, the Atlantic ecosystem once again is the non-moving freshwater environment. Okay? The lakes, ponds, and um, bugs. Now, uh, first, zonation is what we call as the littoral zone. Uh, you may refer these definitions in this figure in the right. Okay, littoral zone containing the rooted vegetation along the shore. So, the littoral zone, munisya dili dapit, ang rooted vegetation. Dira dapit ng mga uh, areas, munay littoral zone. Ang limnetic zone is the open water dominated by planktons. Kini siya, gikan diri nga area, hangtod diri nga area, muna siya ang limnetic zone. Kanang wala na ay naabot sa lupa. Ang littoral zone, diri sa area nga na ay vegetation, hangtod nga maabot ang light sa sun. Okay? Kung asa dapat maabot ang light sa sun or ang uh, uh, basically uh, the light or the heat penetration, of the sun, muna siyang littoral zone. Limnetic zone, kanang wala na plants. And then, the profundal zone is the deep water containing only heterotrophs. Wala na mga producers diri. Kaya dili naman makaabot ang light sa sun. Dili na sila makaphotosynthesize. Diri na ang profundal zone. So, kasagaran mga uh, consumers, heterotrophic organisms na ang naadri. And then, we have here the benthic zone dominated by bottom-dwelling organism. Bottom dwelling organism like mga mussels, mga mollusk, mga gastropods, mga snail, mga mga susu, diri sa ila yung dili na maabot sa sun also or benthic zone. Kining pinakadalom ni sa ni benthic zone kanang iya ang lupa na kibali. Lupa sa lake, lupa sa pond mo na iya ang benthic zone. So I hope this illustration is clear no. And um uh, uh, let us first also understand what is the uh, productivity ratio of the profundal zone and the uh, benthic zone. Now here we have the littoral zone and limnetic zones have the ratio of photosynthesis over respiration is greater than 1. So meaning to say, uh, littoral zone and limnetic zone is basically productive. Daghan ng ilang photosynthesis of respiration. Meaning to say, daghan ng ilang plants, daghan ng ilang animals. Did we're in uh, greater than one. One is a constant that symbolizes the productivity of an environment. And then uh, the profundal zone is the photosynthesis and respiration is less than one. Less than one meaning to say, gamay ang productivity. Okay? More or less, uh, gamay ang ratio of productivity into respiration. Meaning to say, scarce ang sources there is a food. Okay? And compensation depth is equal, no? The photosynthesis and respiration is equal. Compensation depth is where the limnetic and profundal zone mets. Diri magtagbo muna yata ng itawag na compensation depth. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Now uh, let's proceed to the life forms found in a pond, since we're dealing with the low tech ecosystems. So pond ang atong example. Now, uh, first we have the planktons. Planktons, we all know for a fact, planktons are free, free planktonic or free floating organisms. We call them as planktons or we call them as uh, aquatic wanderers. Wanderers meaning to say, mag um, langoy langoy sila without their own will. No, dili sila makalangoy sa ilang kaugalingon. Mag sabay sabay ra sila sa uh, flow sa water. Like the diatoms and uh, dinoflagellates and many other planktons and uh, uh, microscopic algae. And another life form found in the ponds are nectons. These are basically free swimming organisms like fish, mga crabs, muna sila ang mga uh, uh, nectons, mga shrimp, the, the, the all organisms that 
that basically swims with their own will no wala di sila magdepende sa water current maka swim sila sila ng kaugalingan we call them as necton organisms okay and then another are benthos benthos are bottom dwelling organisms like clams katong naka uh, station na gid sila sa ilayom mga clams mga uh, mollusk na other um, gastropods and bivalves nga naa sa pan another are neostone Okay, so neostone are organisms on the surface film of the water, like the water striders. Have you seen water striders? Ang mga water striders are basically kanang magdagandagan gani sa ibabaw sa kwan, ibabaw sa tubig. So, makita ni Monique sila kasagaran sa mga suba, sa mga sapa, sa mga fish pond, mga tunaan sa kabaw, even has water striders. No? Kanang nara sa, nag-float ra sila sa uh, tubig. Nara sila si ibabaw, dili sila mag-sink. Muna sila mga water striders. We call them as new stone. And then another are periphyton. These are attached organisms or like mga hydras. Attached organisms like mga um, kanang mga nang pikit sa mga gamot sa mangroves, mga gamot sa bato. Or, I mean, mga nang pikit sa bato. So those are periphyton. From the word peri, meaning to say, the upper or the outer layer or the attached phyton meaning to say attached to plants or mga attaching plants no mga mga plants ni sila nga nagang attach mga gagmay na plants so those are the life forms found in the pond now let's proceed to the lentic ecosystems lentic ecosystems uh, like lakes no lentic ecosystem like lakes uh, basically, in temperate regions, lakes are often become thermal, thermally stratified. Now, be, uh, earlier we have defined the word stratification, right? So I hope you understand this statement. That in temperate regions, sa mga areas nga na four seasons, no, lakes often become thermally stratified during summer and again in winter owing the differential heating and cooling. So sa mga areas like Japan, Australia... Uh, asa pa mga Greenland, asa pa nga mga temperate areas, na sila'y very often thermal stratification during winter, during summer. Na ilang, ilang thermal stratification, meaning to say thermal stratification is the layering of the temperature variation. So say for example, this is the layer of the lake. Kinisyadri is init, kinisyadri is dilikayo init, kinis grabe kabugnaw na siya thermal stratification. This basically uh, uh, indicates the temperature level. No, Kining red is in it, kining blue is tignaw. Okay? So, na, i, i, this is very true sa mga lentic ecosystems as sa mga temperate regions. Sa tropical region, dili kayo ni siya uh, dili kayo ni siya true kaya nga naman. The, more or less, the lakes in the temp tropical regions are being stratified throughout up to the bottom of the lake. No? Maabot maghihapon siya sa bottom sa lake ang sunlight. So, more or less, dili kayo, grabe ka, mag ang iya ang stratification. Although there is, there is a variation in stratification, but dili kayo pareha sa uh, temperate regions. Okay? The warmer the upper lake uh, or epilimnion becomes temporarily isolated from the cooler, the deeper, or the hypolumnion by a thermocline that acts as a barrier to the exchange of materials. Okay, so, ang taas mo ay warmer. Ang sa ubos mo ay colder. This is the thermocline. This is the metalumnion. Where the warm water and the cold water mets. So, basically, igu-igu uh, na siya. And there are organisms that uh, only thrive in those regions. No? They are as yun mabuhi or ganahan mabuhi. And uh, what are or what is the consequence, the consequence of this situation? Unsa may consequence kung naay thermal stratification, naay layering sa temperature. So the supply of oxygen in the hypolimnion and nutrients in the epilimnion may cut short. Okay? So ang supply sa oxygen dili sa hypolimnion dili kayo daghan nga oxygen. Ang mga organisms nga nadiri dili kay sila maabtan og oxygen. And that's the reason why mga fish kayo mahitabo kay uh, kanang sigig ulan, sigig ulan, walay init, dili makaproduce og oxygen ang mga aquatic plants, thereby 
mag-suffocate ang mga fish dito sa ilayong. Kasagaran mo ato sila sa taas, maginhawa niya. Kung di naging nila kaya, magka, mga matay na sila. That will result to fish kill. Now, ang sa may po consequence dito sa taas. Ang sa taas po, there is no exchange of nutrients. Wala yung nutrients dito sa taas kaya wala may circulation ang uh, layering. So, ang mahitabo, diri ra sa taas ang permanente mainitan, wala iyang nutrients kaya nutrients na ara diri. There is also what we call as the upwelling process. Upwelling process is basically the mixing of the lower layer of the water environment and the higher layer of the water environment wherein the oxygen and nutrients is being circulated and mixed throughout the layers. Okay, so that is a very good scenario wherein everybody or every organisms in different layers enjoys the nutrients and oxygen being supplied in the circulation of water. Okay, and another, during, another consequence is that during spring and fall, as the entire body of water approaches the same temperature, the mixing occurs. So this is true to the temperate region of the ecosystem or the temperate region of the biosphere. So what follows the turnovers? On sa may sunod sa turnovers, as the nutrient at the bottom become available in the photic zone, blooms of phytoplankton often follow. No? Kung sa may mahitabok na i turnover process or katong gitawag nato na upwelling process, mag-bloom ang phytoplankton nga naman because the nutrients coming from the below will go up. Ang sa taas po dayon nga mga phytoplanktons kay diri ra man makita ang mga phytoplanktons dili man sila makita dire kay dili man sila makaphotosynthesize dire sa ubos kay wala may light. So nara sila dire sa taas. Now, kining mga phytoplankton dire sa taas masuplayan og mga nutrients gikan sa ubos, they will grow. So thereby mag bloom ang phytoplanktons or mag gitawag nato na algal blooms. And sometimes they can be harmful. We call them as harmful algal blooms or misconcepted as red tide. Okay? So, not all algal blooms are harmful, no? Daily tanan algal blooms are harmful depending on the intensity of the bloom of the algae. Okay? And uh, here we have the word photic zone and a photic zone. Photic zone is basically the lighted portion of the lake or ocean inhabited by phytoplanktons. Kanang naabtan sa light sa adlaw, muna siya ang photic. Ang a photic are the portions of the lake or ocean where there is no or very little sunlight. It is formally defined as the depth beyond which less than 1% of sunlight penetrates. So in part of your task, you are going to distinguish the relationship between photic zone and epilimnion and hypolimnion. And say relationship sa photic zone, hypolimnion, uh, 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 epilimnion sa photic zone, ana. Okay? So on sa may kala, on sa may relationship sa light penetration ngadto sa thermal stratification. So very simple. Okay? Another one is we have here the term dystrophic. Dystrophic lakes are body of water such as lake that contains amount, large amounts of undecomposed organic matter derived from terrestrial plants. So dystrophic lakes are poor in dissolved nutrients and therefore unproductive. They are common in peat areas and may develop into peat bugs. Kini ang mga lakes na gamay ra kayo og nutrients. No? Kini ang mga dystrophic lakes. Daghan kayo ilang mga uh, undecomposed nga organic matter. Tapos ang mga undecomposed organic matter will not be available for the plants as a source of nutrients. Okay? So in warm climates, mixing may occur only once a year, only in winter. Winter. And then uh, in temperate biomes, mixing typically occurs twice a year. We call that as dimectic. Kung once a year lang siya, monomectic ang tawag. Kung ang mixing sa sa lakes mahitabo twice a year, we call that as dimectic. Okay? Monomectic or dimectic. Primary production in standing water ecosystems depends on the chemical nature of the basin and the nature of imports from the streams or lands like the inputs from the watershed or river banks and is generally inversely related to depth. No? Inversely related to depth yod ang nutrient or primary production. The deeper 
or the the deeper the lake the lesser the nutrient the shallower the lake the richer the nutrient is okay so inversely related yield of fish per unit of water surface area is greater than the shallow is greater in shallow than in deep lakes but less or but uh, deep lakes may have higher individual fish yields so meaning to say ang mga um, ang mga areas or mga lotic in, mga lentic environments that are deeper or shallower shallower has higher no higher ang yang uh, productivity because nutrients are readily available in their surroundings dili dili na magkinahanglan og upwelling process okay but there are cases that uh, deeper lakes has a, a very rich also especially that especially when it it is uh, an old lake no daan nga lake nga ang mga nutrients na deposit na dito sa pinaka deep niya even the deep mga fish naga utilize ato nga mga nutrients or sources of food now let's proceed to the classification of lakes based on productivity since we were talking about the productivity of the lakes here we have the oligotrophic lakes mga oligotrophic lakes are poor in nutrients no mga lakes ni sila nga bag ulang na mugna nga lakes may it be either na himo sila tungod kay nay bulkan ni ni buto tapos na nagulan niya tanan tubig na paingon dito na himo siyag lake that is bag ulang na on gitawag nato siyag oligotrophic gamay pa ang nutrients nga dito like the bulkan taal the bulkan taal is no longer an oligotrophic kay dugay naman siya rich naman ang iyang nutrients karon so that is a eutrophic lake na siya high in nutrients pero adtong bag pa siya na himo nga lake oligotrophic to siya kay poor pa ang iyang nutrients wala pa kay mga nutrients mga elements mga fertilizers nga naga pa increase sa productivity atong lake okay now let's proceed to the lotic ecosystem lotic ecosystem uh, like the lotic meaning to say these are moving no moving water or aquatic environments like the streams and rivers and springs no sila ang mga lotic ecosystem so what's the difference between the two current is a much is a much more the major controlling and the limiting factor in streams no si kalahian sa river ug sa stream so may kalahian na nila for me is still the size of the two no ang um, streams are narrower the rivers are wider and deeper kumpara sa streams nga shallow and narrow okay so yung diri current is one of the major controlling and limiting factor in streams no kung hinay ang current hinay pod ang uh, productivity i think so and then land land water interchange in relatively more intensive in streams resulting in a more often open ecosystem and heterotrophic type of community metabolism when the size of stream is small okay so the relationship of this one is relatively similar to the relationship of the ponds and lakes okay so oxygen tension is generally high and more uniform in streams and there is a little or no thermal and chemical stratification except in large slow moving rivers so ang oxygen tension more or less pares parehas lang na siya sa streams kay mabaw man as you might have noticed ang mga streams pas pas na siya mag agas pas pas yung iyang uh, water flow and therefore ang iya ang oxygen supply is daghan pod throughout the layer kay wala may mga wala man kayo mga streams nga laom no tanan man sila magbaw and rivers na sila little to no, no thermal or chemical stratification na gamay nila nga thermal stratification especially in parts of the river nga naay mga layom mga mga parts no katong na mga na shaded parts of the river mo na sa thermal stratifications okay and in a given stretch of streams there are two zones that classifies them both no ang um, two zones of the streams we call that ang isa is the rapid zone ang isa is the pool zone ang rapid zone mo na siyang sa taas na portion as a current great enough to keep the bottom clear of silt or other loose materials thus providing a firm substrate 
tanan part sa stream nga uh, nagsulog ang tubig muna siya ang rapid zone okay tanan part sa stream nga sulog ang tubig muna ang rapid zone nga walay mga silts silts bot pasabot muna ang mga abog-abog nga na deposit sa mga bato sa mga lupa okay so muna siya ang rapid zone ang pool zone is a deeper water where the velocity of the current is reduced hinay ang ang water flow wherein the animals or uh, so that sand and silt settle providing a soft bottom favorable for burrowing and swimming animals so tanan parts sa uh, rivers or streams na naay naay layom muna siya ang pool zone from the word pool no murag pool okay so those are the two classifications of the zonations of the streams so i hope that's clear and here we have the two types of lotic systems based on the chemical composition of the water so the two types first type is the hard water or carbonate rivers with 100 or more ppm dissolved in organic solids so in regards to the chemical composition siya, no? hard water kung daghan ang kayo ang iyang mga decomposed or dissolved in organic solids uh, pila ka daghan more than 100 ppm so I hope uh, kining 100 ppm na encounter na ninyo sa inyo ang chemistry. And then another uh, type with regards to the chemical composition is the soft water or chloride rivers with less than 25 ppm of dissolved solids. So water chemistry of cars from, uh, carbonate rivers is controlled by rock weathering weather, where, whereas the atmospheric precipitation is the dominant factor in the chloride rivers. Okay. And um, the humic or black water streams with high concentrations of dissolved organic material represent uh, another class of streams found in the warm lowlands. Okay, so basically that is the two uh, classifications or types of lotic systems with regards on the chemical composition of the water. Now, let's proceed to the third type, the freshwater wetlands. So, let's go back here. Ang atong ipakita ganiha are kini. The three types, we have, we are done on the lotic, we are done on the lentic, and we are now going to the wetlands. So, here we have the wetlands. Wetlands are basically uh, any area covered by shallow freshwater for at least part of the annual cycle. Accordingly, wetlands are saturated with water continually or part of the year. So, tanan part nga na pwede ka kabahaan kung maguyan, mamayar po kung maginit. Those are wetlands, no? Kanang nasa GL kung nag kung matumog GL na ay dito magyan niyo na murasya of uh, marsh or uh, murasya og swamp, mangrove swamp na gana kayo himo ag fish pan pero di ay mamayar to siya kung mag init okay so those are wetlands a uh, key factor that determines the productivity and the species composition of the wetland community is the hydro period okay so hydro period meaning to say the period wherein the water is being supplied to that particular uh, ecosystem hydro period again periodicity, periodicity of the water level uh, freshwater wetlands can then be classified as a pulse stabilized fluctuating water level ecosystem si similar to the intertidal marine and estuarine ecosystems okay so those are uh, wetlands and there are classifications of wetlands according to their interconnections with deep water and or upland ecosystems no mo siya ang pito classifications of wetlands first is the riverine wetlands these are Wetlands located in the low-lying depressions or oxbows and floodplains associated with rivers. No? Freshwater tidal marshes along with the low reaches of large rivers in the coastal plains of the U.S. are among the most productive of natural ecosystems. Kini sila ang mga bukana, no? mga riverine wetlands. Bukana sa mga river. And another is lacustrine or lacus or lakes wetlands. Uh, associated with lakes, ponds, or dams, river channels. Periodically flooded when deeper bodies of water overflow. Kanang mag, uh, mag, mag drain ang dam or mag uh, kuha ng dam, magpataas o 
magpat mag pataas og water level ang dam. So katong part na nabasaan mo toy na mo tay gitawag na to lacustrine wetland. And then palustrine wetlands from the word palus which means marsh, okay? Include uh, what are variously called marshes like bogs, fens, wet places and uh, temporary ponds that occur in depressions not directly connected with the lakes rivers although they may be be in the old river beds or filled ponds in the lake basins so tanan to siya nga mga areas we call those as palustrine wetlands another are fen wetlands okay so this is still under the palustrine wetlands fen wetlands only slightly acidic typically dominated by sedges bog wetlands however are very acidic characterized by accumulation of peat and dominated by sphagosum moss okay so those are areas and then uh, palustrine marshes dominated by emergent herbaceous vegetation and are often breeding habitat for waterfowl and other aquatic and semi aquatic invertebrates so we have here the word marshes and swamps and part of your uh, task in this module is to uh, differentiate the marsh and swamps so unsa inyo ang understanding on ang kalahian sa marsh o sa swamp ideally kung namati mo aning uh, uh, recording the difference is that they are both um, they are both wetlands no they are both types of wetlands the marsh is only dominated by emergent herbaceous vegetation meaning meaning to say they're dominated by minor forms of plants while the swamps are dominated by woody vegetation or forested wetlands so woody vegetation meaning to say the higher forms of plants are vegetating in the swamps so kung swamp higher forms of plants mga mangrove so wala man tay gitawag na mangrove marsh mangrove swamps gina siya so katong puy ana ni shrek shrek the ogre moto siyang swamps no na mga mangroves dito okay and uh, that concludes the, our discussion on the learning activities for this module and part of your self-evaluation on this module is these um, tasks no i will be uploading this task in the google classroom and you are required to answer this uh, within before april 15 siguro dapat maansira na ninyo so number one is in essay form no Take note, essay form. Explain the hydrologic cycle while using all of the following words. Okay, so katong discuss na to kaganiha, i-explain ninyo ang hydrologic cycle gamit ni tanan ng mga words. Kinahangla na sa inyo ang essay, makita na ako ni tanan ng mga words. Kung giyon sa ninyo pag-explain ang hydrologic cycle. Number two, discuss the importance of freshwater habitats. Okay, so na dito kaganiha sa module, kung sa importansya, inyong i-discuss in an essay type no dili ko gusto na i-bullet type ra ninyo base sa inyong nakita dito sa module another differentiate the three classifications of freshwater habitats give one example of each with an image of that example so three classification of freshwater habitat on sa to siya atong gidiskas lang bago lang tapos tagaan ko ninyo og isa ka example kada classification with a picture sa ana nga example okay Another is uh, number four. There are six classifications of life forms in the pond. Define each one of them and provide a representative organism with a photo. May it be either a photo under the microscope or the actual photo of that particular representative organism. Okay? And then explain the thermal stratification of the lake using the words epilimnion hypolimnion, and thermocline. In yung explain ang thermal stratification of the lake. Nga nung na thermal stratification. Nga nung na layering of temperature. And then number six, streams are divided into two regions or zones. Give the characteristic of each zone. Kung sa mga characteristics sa atong nga zone, ang pool zone or ang um, rapid zone. And the number seven is compare and contrast wetlands and marshes. Okay, ako ang explain bago lang. Explain the relationship between thermal stratification of the lake, it, uh, epilimnion and hypolimnion, and 
the light penetration of the sun, the photic and aphotic zone. Unsa yung relationship sa thermal stratification sa lake o ang light penetration sa sun. Okay? So, all in all, that concludes our module 2. If you have any questions, you may uh, send it uh, in the group chat. Pwede mo mag-chat uh, mag dito sa atong group chat kung na may mga pangutan. For the meantime, uh, I will be concluding this um, discussions for the module 2. I hope everybody is still up, up to this moment and I hope to see you again to our next module. Thank you so much.